Welcome to TPM Vids, where we talk all about theme parks and more. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. It's a great time to be a Super Mario fan with Super Nintendo World opening at Universal Studios Hollywood. Located in the lower lot of the park, this brand new state-of-the-art land is vibrant, kinetic energy radiates from every corner, and the sights and sounds truly immerse you right into the video game world. There's so much to do and it's a lot of fun. Today, get ready for a complete tour of the land. From tips, tricks, and secrets, to deliciously themed food, the Mario Kart ride, and everything else in between. So sit back as we count down the top 10 things in Super Nintendo World you can't miss. Number 10. It's not Super Nintendo without the characters. And here in Super Nintendo World, you can meet Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach. You don't want to miss them because they're actually articulated characters. They have the ability to blink, move their mouth, and speak to interact with guests. It's a nice to meet you. Even just watching them is entertaining. Mario and Luigi meet together in the middle of the land by the warp pipe, then Princess Peach meets under the gazebo across from her castle. Their sets last about 15 minutes each, and for Mario and Luigi, they did cut the line off pretty much as soon as they came out. Hi. Thank you so much for coming to play. They were quite the popular pair, so my advice would be to get in line just before their scheduled set begins. Number 9. One way to really level up your experience in Super Nintendo World is with the Power Up Band. Now, in my honest opinion, I think the Power Up Bands are a must. They really heighten your experience in the land, since so much of what's offered is interactive. There are six different character bands available, and at 40 bucks each, I'd say they're definitely worth it. Now, there are a couple places to purchase them. They're available in the 1UP factory and from the vending machines by the giant piranha plant. You can also find them in some gift shops as soon as you enter the park upstairs. Now, once you have your power-up band, open the Universal app and click Super Nintendo World to add the band to your account. During your time in Super Nintendo World, this app will be your best friend. Oh, and once you add your band, you can also change your display name. As you walk around, you'll see tons of coin boxes, but if you punch one without a band, you'll hear this. But with a power-up band, you'll hear this. That sound is pure serotonin, and you're able to punch these boxes as much as you want to collect digital coins. As the day goes on, see how many coins you can rack up. But this is just the beginning of the interactive elements in the land. Number 8. Another thing you can't miss in Super Nintendo World if you have a power-up band are the Key Challenge minigames. There are four of them here at Universal Studios Hollywood, which can all be identified with this gold key icon. First up is Piranha Plant Nap Mishap, where you need to turn off all the alarm clocks before the piranha plant wakes up. This is definitely one that's easier when there's more than one person because you will be running around a lot. I mean, it was quite a workout. Then there's Koopa Troopa Power Punch. Say that three times fast. Here you need to time your POW block punch so that the last block lights up with the shell in the middle of the pipe. Before you begin, it gives you the timing of the lights. Getting the timing just right is especially challenging if you're on hard mode. Thwomp Panel Panic at the back of the land is nestled inside this mini cave. Here, the objective is to flip all the blue squares to yellow. It may seem easy, but this is another one of the more challenging ones. Again, having more than one person also makes this a lot easier. Lastly, with Goomba Crazy Crank, you need to crank the wheel as consistently as possible so you can knock down that Goomba. This is probably my favorite one. Now, you are able to play every key challenge as much as you'd like. You just need to get back in line. You'll collect a key for each successful attempt, but after you do them once that day, you'll automatically get the hard mode for every subsequent turn. So as the day goes on, it will get a bit more difficult, but you can stack these keys. And there's a good reason for it. Number 7. Now you're not just collecting keys for nothing. Once you've collected at least three keys, you're able to tackle Bowser Jr. in Shadow Showdown to win back the Golden Mushroom. 
Now, Shadow Showdown is located at the back of the land, so make sure you don't miss this. Once you verify you have three keys, you'll find yourself in Bowser Jr.'s castle. I really loved all the pictures on the wall and seeing all this graffiti. It was really great atmosphere, and the theming in here was just perfect. Plus, there were more interactive features. Now, once you're briefed on how to play, you'll enter the chamber and head to your assigned number to begin the challenge. You'll spend the next two minutes swatting bob bombs away, ducking bullet bills, and jumping to get power-ups. It's a really fun little challenge, and this is another one you can do multiple times a day, especially if you have a bunch of keys stacked up in your account. For every three keys, you can do Shadow Showdown. Number 6 now, I need to share two kind of secret areas to explore and collect coins that aren't as obvious and are easy to miss. The first one is as soon as you walk into the land on the left-hand side. There was never really anyone in here, and to be honest, on my first walk around the land, I completely missed both these rooms. I was so focused on everything else. This is also where you can find the first of four hidden 8-bit characters. If you tap your band on the M, Peach appears. Each 8-bit character earns you a stamp plus a one-time bonus of 45 coins. Now, another hidden room can be found at the back of the land to the right of Bowser Jr. Showdown. Just look for this coin box, but before we head upstairs, to the left of the entrance is where we can find the second 8-bit character. This time it's Mario. Now, as we head upstairs, listen to how the music changes to the underground theme from Super Mario. That's another thing this land does really well, is use music to immerse you in a new environment, just like in the video games. Now when you get up here to the left, you'll find the third 8-bit character. This time it's Luigi. Now the fourth 8-bit character, which is Bowser, is hidden in the Thwomp Panel Panic Cave. I was so preoccupied with the game that I forgot to claim Bowser. I saw him on the wall, but I never actually did it. So that's my loss. Now back upstairs. These two rooms have a bunch more blocks to interact with and collect coins. Now arguably one of the best views of Super Nintendo World is right outside by the binoculars, which leads me to number 5. Now these aren't just any green binoculars, they're actually augmented reality binoculars that takes a live video of the land and overlays it with graphics and hidden characters. You can pan, tilt, and zoom to look at specific areas of the land, and some special surprises might happen as well. You might see Dash Yoshi on the mushroom, bullet bills flying across the sky, or even Bowser's airship. It's such a cool piece of technology, and it's really neat seeing the land come alive in this way. Now, you don't need a power-up band to use the AR binoculars, but if you do have one, they also allow you to collect stamps in the Super Nintendo World app. Also, as a little bonus, once you've defeated Bowser Jr. in Shadow Showdown, you can head up to the binoculars where you can also search for a hidden key. I was not successful in finding it, but if you find it, leave a comment below! Number 4 the main restaurant of Super Nintendo World is Toadstool Cafe, where Toad and his staff have been cooking up some delicious creations, all of which just happen to be inspired by Italian-American cuisine. Now once you order, you're seated at a table in the dining room and the food is delivered by a team member. As you're waiting, you can watch the toads in the kitchen or look out to the other windows to get a view of the Mushroom Kingdom. One thing you won't want to miss if you're eating in the restaurant is Bowser's airship passing by the windows. The music gets all ominous, the lights turn blue, and all the toads freak out. It's great. Now when it comes to the food, it's all fantastically themed, and I was able to try all the items available at the time. I'll rate each dish out of 5 stars, so get ready for the TPM Nintendo Food Review. First, we'll start off with the Superstar Lemon Squash Drink. It was a honey lemon soda with mango and tropical boba. It wasn't too sweet, and it was a solid 5 stars. Highly recommend this. Next up are the appetizers. The Piranha Plant Caprese Salad looks really fun, but aside from the two slices of buffalo mozzarella, there really isn't much to this dish. The Piranha Plant head was literally just half a tomato on a plate, so I'd give it two stars. Next up are the Toadstool Cheesy Garlic Knots. This mushroom-shaped bread sort of lacked flavor and wasn't as garlicky as you'd expect. The marinara dipping sauce, however, was very tasty, and that redeemed this dish a bit, so I'd give it a 2.5 star out of 5. Next up are the salads. We'll start with the Yoshi's favorite fruit and veggie salad. 
It was very light and fresh tasting with lots of fruit, but they went a bit heavy on the apple vinaigrette dressing. The Yoshi eggs looked really cool, but they were just unseasoned croutons, so it was kind of like eating a stale piece of bread. Overall, it was a good option for a salad, so I'd give this 3.5 stars. Next was the Superstar Chicken Salad. This was pretty much just a standard chicken Caesar salad, but it was very, very underwhelming. And I love Caesar salad. The chicken tasted okay, but the lettuce was really wet, and overall it was just kind of sad. So I'd give it 1.5 stars. Now, when it comes to the main dishes, everything was phenomenal. We'll start with the fire flower spaghetti and meatballs. I went in expecting to hate this because pasta is usually something that isn't executed well at a theme park, but this was fantastic. It was on the spicier side, which added a nice little kick, but the sauce was very tasty, and the meatballs were juicy and full of tons of flavor. I would get this again in a heartbeat, so it gets a solid 5-star rating from me. Next is the Mario Burger. This was a standard bacon mushroom cheeseburger, but honestly, it was one of the best beef burgers I've had at a theme park. The beef was juicy, there was tons of flavor, and the truffle fries were nice and crispy. I'd give this 4.5 stars. Then finally, there is the Luigi Burger. And if you're a chicken pesto fan, then you need to try this. It's pretty much a grilled chicken burger with cheese, pesto, and roasted green peppers. I was kind of skeptical of the green peppers, but it added such a nice freshness to the bite that I was not expecting. Then pair that with the truffle fries and the pesto dip, and you have yourselves a 5-star meal. Great job, Toad. And for those of you with a sweet tooth, let's check out the desserts. Can't skip those. If you're a fan of rich coffee-flavored tiramisu, then the question block tiramisu is the exact opposite. It had very little coffee flavor, and it was more on the creamier side. The question blocks were like shortbread cookies, so those were okay, but overall it gets 3 stars. My favorite dessert was definitely the Mount Bean Pole Cake. It was a cake spin on Neapolitan ice cream. Inside there was chocolate pudding, strawberry mousse, and vanilla cookie cake, topped with a matcha mousse. The vanilla cake was a lot more firm than what I was expecting, but it was a solid 5 stars for flavor. It was delicious, and it also looked super cute. Last but not least, the Princess Peach Cupcake. It's much bigger than it looks, but it's just your basic funfetti cupcake with buttercream frosting. And there's a lot of frosting. I'd give it 2 stars. Now I didn't try the kids meals, but there's a mini burger and a kids pasta. Overall, the food at Toadstool Cafe provides you with a variety of options. Some of it is top tier theme park food, plus everything is very photogenic. You really can't go wrong here. Now if you've already tried one of these dishes, which one was your favorite? Comment below! Number 3 the main ride in Super Nintendo World is Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. But before we even get to the ride, the queue is an attraction in itself. If you're a Yoshi fan, get ready because before getting into Bowser's Castle, you pass through Yoshi Island. The standby queue begins straight ahead in the caves where you weave between glowing crystals and mushrooms. The mood then changes back to the typical Yoshi Island where a bunch of Yoshis are there to greet you. It's unfortunate Hollywood didn't get the Yoshi ride from Japan, but at least the iconic Nintendo dinosaur has some presence in the land. Now, the entrance into Bowser's Castle is truly a wow moment. The castle we grew up seeing in all the Mario games is brought to life right in front of us. It's so cool. And there's even the Mario Kart trophies on display. Plus, the trophy we'll be competing for later on. Then as you make your way into the library, there are so many fun little easter eggs and details to take in. From animated boos on the wall to Bowser's giant throne with a picture of Princess Peach, there is so much to see in this room. Even if the line is ridiculously long, you'll be occupied the entire time. A little further down, there's even Bowser's factory where he's making all the bomb bombs and bullet bills. Then in the broadcast room is where you can also find all the characters' racing suits. Now Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge does offer a single rider line, but it skips everything I've just showed you. So my suggestion is that if you have time to do multiple rides and it's not a busy day, make sure you don't miss the queue and take at least one time to fully immerse yourself into Bowser's castle. I think you'll be glad you did. Number 2 When it comes to the physical Mario Kart ride, Universal hit a home run with this one. First, you'll need to grab your Mario hat before heading down to the load area. This is the point where the single rider joins the queue. Then once you're downstairs and board your car, each of the seats has an AR visor that snaps onto the hat. 
Also, if you have a power-up van, don't forget to tap on the center of the steering wheel so you can earn coins and badges while you ride. Now, yes, this ride is not physically fast, but it's truly a classic modern dark ride with huge physical sets and animatronics. It just also happens to use AR technology and projection mapping to heighten the experience and tie everything together. You honestly can't really judge this ride based solely off a of POV because without seeing the AR, it's a completely different ride. Luckily, I filmed through the AR visor so you can get a better sense of the experience. Now, it looks kind of blurry on camera and you're only seeing one side of the lens, but in person, I promise you the animation is crystal clear. The ride is a lot of fun, especially once you get the hang of using your head to aim and shoot the shells. Not to mention it has great re-rideability as well. The day I visited, it was still in technical rehearsals and the crowds were super low. I probably rode at least 10 times and each time I noticed something different. I'd say Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge is arguably one of the best rides at Universal Studios Hollywood. Number 1 the last thing you can't miss is the land at night. With all the scenery illuminated, the kinetics of the land come alive just that much more, and who knows, maybe Mario and Luigi will stop by too. Universal Studios Hollywood has a huge hit with Super Nintendo World, and this fully immersive experience is a perfect way to end your night at the park. So what are your initial thoughts on Super Nintendo World? Do you have any plans on visiting this new land? I'd love to know! Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. 